Now, the first Republican presidential debate took place in the past few hours. Eight candidates clashed over the economy, abortion rights and the culture wars. But the event was overshadowed by the absence of frontrunner Donald Trump. The embattled former president instead chose to release an interview with former Fox News anchor Tucker Carlson at the same time. It comes as Trump's former lawyer Rudy Giuliani became the latest of his co-defendants in the Georgia election interference case to surrender. Joining me now to discuss the debate is political strategist and commentator Rena Shah and the Chicago Sun-Times Washington Bureau Chief Lynn Sweet. Welcome to you both. Rena, if I can start with you, please. Uh, what stood out for you from this debate and who stood out in particular? Two things really left me as sort of speechless. It was the number of times that Florida Governor Ron DeSantis talked about America being in decline. And secondly, so much talk about securing the southern border. It came up over and over again. There were many questions asked tonight of these candidates, everything ranging from Bidenomics to cartels and fentanyl, even education. But it seemed that so many of these candidates wanted to tie these issues back to not only the Biden administration's failures, but essentially to talking about how these issues are so mishandled by Democrats and can and should be trusted by Republicans, because, again, it's Republicans who seem to care about the borders. And so those were really striking moments for me. But truly, it was Governor Nikki Haley, the former governor of South Carolina and the U.N. ambassador under Trump that had the most breakout moments tonight. She seemed very reasonable, rational, and certainly not in any state to be uh, auditioning for VP. She stood her ground and even quoted Margaret Thatcher with the famous quote about giving a task to a woman instead of a man. OK, really interesting. Lynn, what about for you? Did anybody in particular stand out? Was there a front runner in your view? Well, I have to agree because with... Uh, I, I wrote it in my column that was just posted at suntimes.com that Nikki Haley was a big winner of the debate. The whole strategy of the debate, though, was clear that the debate did not center on the attack on the overwhelming frontrunner, Donald Trump, who is going to, in a matter of hours, surrender in Atlanta, Georgia, for uh, criminal charges to overturn the 2020 election. So Nikki Haley had a good night. And for people who have not seen her, she came across as uh, pragmatic and as somebody looking for consensus. That may not be a popular message, however, to the base of the Republican Party, which is increasingly part of the Trump MAGA movement. But the campaign. The other takeaway of the many takeaways from this uh, debate is that Florida Governor De uh, Ron DeSantis, who was seen as the number two, though he's still behind Trump by a long margin, he did nothing to do any kind of a reset or come out from ahead of the pack. So those are some of the main takeaways that the bottom line is former President Trump really didn't harm himself by not showing up. Yeah. Rena, what's your view on that? How significant was it that Donald Trump wasn't there? And what impact did he have on the debate, even though he wasn't there? There were many moments in which it was easy to forget about Trump because people didn't easily name check him. In fact, I believe it was Governor Christie who was the first to bring him up, mentioning former president under indictment. And so that was a moment in which we sort of were reawakened that, yes, we have this really historic situation in which we're seeing uh, the previous occupant of the White House under 91 charges across four states. Uh, truly a humbling moment for anybody that's seeking the Republican nomination, because how do you follow such big footsteps? But again, tonight was not about auditioning for VP in any way. And I think that's what many people went in thinking it would be. But it was about stealing the spotlight. And I think there were some people on stage tonight that were successful in doing so. Like I mentioned, Nikki Haley, I thought was quite masterful in her responses, uh, particularly on abortion, where she talked about consensus and, uh, and was very different 
different from the pack of males who just beat their pro-life positions. Uh, but also when you looked at Ramaswamy, Vivek Ramaswamy, uh, a, a wealthy businessman, a 38-year-old who called climate change a hoax tonight, that's not something I think will be very appealing to many Americans of the millennial generation or Gen Z. It was Gen Z that put Joe Biden in the White House. So to hear a 38-year-old again say climate change is a hoax was a uh, pretty astonishing. And then also, let's not forget this man who was all the way at the right uh, right side of this lineup, and it was North Dakota Governor Burgum. Uh, now, when you're on the edges of the, the podiums there, uh, your podiums at the edges there, it's, it's easy to get forgotten. But I think he did a pretty good job of bringing up why he was in the race. He name-checked China quite a bit. Uh, but there were a couple people that I, disappointed me tonight, and DeSantis was one of them. Again, talking about America and decline so much, giving very vanilla answers, in my uh, opinion. And then also with Chris Christie, he was thought to be an intellectual bully. I don't think he really met that, uh, that the moment for himself. I think he stood his ground and he fought back against Ramaswamy. But the really fiery exchanges tonight were quite unexpected. And they were between v former Vice President Mike Pence and Vivek Ramaswamy. Very remarkable. And I think there will be a lot of clips that go viral on those because Mike Pence is a man who's been known to be sort of quiet. He fought back vociferously tonight. OK, thank uh -huh. you. Uh, Lynn, eight candidates on that stage tonight. In your view, just how significant was this first of these debates? Because we're still very many months away from the Republican candidate actually being decided. Well, yes and no. Part of the uh, what was going on in this debate tonight is that they really, in, in, in a practical way, we're only talking to two groups of people, which is not most of us and certainly not the world. It is to the voters in those early voting states, Iowa, New Hampshire, South Carolina, and Nevada, where if you can't get through these states, then you cannot survive to go on to the rest of the nation to see if you could get enough support to become the nominee. The other thing you're doing is you're talking to big donors so you could get a financial lifeline to stay in in case, well, in case lightning strikes, in case Trump implodes. Uh, maybe the chance of lightning striking at the moment seems more likely because Trump is so entrenched in his popularity. Remember, nothing has made a dent. His ratings have only gone up with each indictment. But there is no one story when you think of the American way you nominate a president. These are 50 little stories that come together, usually first off in the states that go first. So what you saw tonight, especially with Vivek Ramaswamy, who is kind of the uh, up and comer, he has had some increase in the polls, while he said things that might appeal to the base, he also carved himself out of a general election race. Uh, one other thing that was just um, illogical for a man who presents himself as logical, he praised Donald Trump as the best president of the 21st century. Well, if you have the best president running again, then the question is to Ramaswamy, why are you in it? OK, well, on that note, we will leave it. Lynn Sweet and Rina Shah, really interesting to get both of your thoughts. Thanks very much for being with us. Thank you. Thank you.